I cannot believe that I'm out here making another video about Twitter. Uh, I thought the last one wouldn't be the last one. I thought that I would not have to have this brain worm in my head again, but I guess I'm going to go into the details of everything that's happened since then, because of course not everyone is quite as online as I am. Uh, that everyone else uh, really knows the crazy stuff that is happening at Twitter right now. So of course, Elon Musk purchased Twitter, took over, laid off most of the workforce, and immediately began setting out to make the website, of course, the way that he wants to make the website. And what that means is basically that he decided to completely overhaul the verification system. So to understand, essentially, when you're on Twitter, there is this verification system that says that, hey, uh, you know, this account for, say, Bill Gates or some other famous person is actually the account that is owned by uh, Bill Gates and not some random imitator. The reason that they have this system is because, in fact, they were sued because, of course, there was some situation in the past in which somebody imitated somebody else, did not work out well, and, you know, the person sued, and so Twitter put this verification system in place. And so you get this blue check mark on this little badge in your profile to say, like, hey, you're, you know, the real person. And the problem is that over time, this became considered something of an endorsement, because basically it meant that, you know, like they considered these sort of checkmark people as to be a higher class. Uh, and, and, and they are in a certain way, because again, they are people who are notable outside of Twitter. They are cultural figures. They are actors and actresses and singers and, you know, just people who are generally going to be um, you know, more interesting, but also at the same time, Twitter wants to keep those people around. Those are the kinds of people who make the platform worth using, because of course the big draw of Twitter in the first place is that you go there and you can hang out with, you know, Taylor Swift or whoever. I don't know. I don't even know what celebrities use the platform, honestly. So, uh, so yeah, the problem is that a lot of people who, you know, use the site and don't have any followers and don't have much reach and, and so on, uh, have this impression that the reason that they're not getting any uh, traction is because they don't have that blue check mark and not because like their posts are bad or nobody likes them or they're not interesting or whatever. Uh, you know, they, they just can't really accept that thing. They believe that for some reason they're being silenced or, you know, that they're being artificially repressed or whatever. And that's why like their posts are not, you know, making them to a big audience. And then conversely, they see these people with blue checks who have a lot more followers who seem to be able to tweet, you know, the stupidest stuff and get plenty of engagement. And they go, clearly, it must be the blue check. It's not. It's because that person was already famous or interesting to begin with. They just happen to have a lot of people. And so they get a lot of engagement. The problem is that Elon takes over and he immediately says, OK, what we're going to do is we're going to take away that system where, you know, there's this arcane, archaic system where, you know, people could be approved or not approved, and who knows, you know, what the exact methodology is for that, and maybe there's some bias to it, and, you know, maybe there's, like, a bunch of reporters who get blue checks that don't deserve them, while there might be other people who don't get blue checks who do, and so on. Uh, so, you know, his proposal is, okay, we're going to make it that it is a paid system instead. So you pay a certain number of dollars a month, you get a blue check, awesome. Uh, and so then, of course, this goes through a lot of iterations, and probably the funniest is that he then goes and he says, okay, the blue check is going to be $20 a month. And Stephen King, who is one of the big tweeters, who has a ton of followers, and of course his own verified blue check, says, uh, well, I'm not going to pay for that. And the reason he's not going to pay for that is that it's stupid. If you are, you know, a a really, really big author, like, you are the draw for the platform. You're doing free labor to advertise the platform by talking about it, by using it. And so if somebody's telling you, oh, by the way, now you have to pay me $20 a month to continue using it, it's like, no, it should be the reverse. You should be paying me because, you know, you like, if you're Stephen King, like, you're a big draw. Like, you don't have to use the platform. You're doing it because you enjoy it. And so, you know, initially it's like, okay, we're going to do it $20. And then Stephen King says, you know, basically, fuck, no, I'm not going to do that. And then Elon does the funniest thing I've ever seen, which is that he goes in the replies and he says, okay, I'm so sorry. What about $8 a month, please? Please, can you please pay me $8 a month instead? And, uh, you know, again, picked a smaller number out of his hat. When you're negotiating, it's a terrible idea to just keep lowering. <laughs> you know, like, you gotta, you gotta stick to something. Regardless, Elon negotiates himself down to $8 and seems to decide to stick with that number because that is the number that he ends up using going forward. So he rolls out the service for Twitter Blue, which is $8 for a blue check mark. And, of course... Thing happens that you would expect happens, which is that immediately 
there is a huge wave of people impersonating other people. <laughs> So of course, that doesn't work out. So they immediately turn it off and say, okay, sorry, sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna roll it out a bit later. We're gonna fix, you know, we're gonna figure out how to fix this. We're gonna prevent impersonation stuff and we're gonna make that part of the terms of service of paying for Twitter Blue and so on. It's turned off for a while. And then Elon does this thing where he's like, okay, well, what we're going to do is we initially have this blue check and it says this is a legacy verified account, meaning it's one of the old verified accounts from before the whole Twitter blue thing. And then he says, okay, we're going to make the Twitter blue one say, okay, this is, uh, you know, uh, it's from Twitter blue. It's not from being verified previously. So you could actually go and click on the person's profile and see like, okay, were they verified previously or do they pay for Twitter blue? So you could tell them apart, right? And of course, what they found was that this just meant that people didn't like that because then you could just still tell who had paid and who hadn't. And it was very clear which people were significant and important and which people weren't, uh, which made the whole paying for the blue tick feel kind of pointless because again, wouldn't really get you any more reach or whatever. Fine. So he then changes the message. He changes the message to say that it could be either, could be either one, we don't know. Well, you know, they do know on the back end, but they're not telling you on the front end. Uh, which is to say that they're just trying to obscure it. They're just trying to make it seem like those paid blue check people are just as valuable and as important as the you know previously verified blue check people. And he also says that he's eventually going to take away previous verified blue checks at some point in the future. He eventually says that he's going to do it on April 1st. April 1st comes around. That doesn't happen. Uh, no word. No idea what was happening there. Uh, several days later, the Twitter icon got changed to a doge. Uh, probably a very delayed April Fool's joke, apparently. You couldn't get that one right. Very funny. Uh, just shows you, you know, how, how well things are going on at Twitter HQ. Um, and of course, there's a lot of other things going on at Twitter HQ that I'm not going to cover. I'm just talking about the blue check specifically. So finally, on 420, 2023, uh, the legacy verified blue checks are taken away entirely, uh, which is very funny because immediately there is a very stark realization that, you know, basically that means that everybody left who has a blue check, somebody paid for it. And it turns out that all of those people suck. You know, they're generally low follower count, uninteresting people who have paid to get this blue check. And they tend to have this very high, you know, sense of their own importance just because they paid $8 to use this site, a thing that you don't have to do because the site is entirely free. And it's also very clear that Elon was hoping that taking away all these legacy verified blue checks would then encourage all of these celebrities who had them to go ahead and sign up for the subscription so that they would get a lot more signups. Uh, but it turns out that basically none of those people cared. The whole point was not having the blue check. No one cared about having the blue check. Again, the blue check was just a point of verification. It was not some kind of badge of honor that, you know, Elon and those kinds of people who think like that have been saying it is. And so as a result, the blue check is, you know, actually becoming devalued faster and faster and faster. The more people, you know, who just spend $8 to buy one uh, come around. Because of course it just says, hey, I just have $8. Like it doesn't say that you're important or meaningful or whatever, it just says you have $8. And that means that now the people who have blue checks are, you know, it's like the least valuable thing. It's like a badge of shame more than a badge of honor. And so of course also Elon does this thing where he starts prioritizing these blue checks in the algorithm, which is to say that now if you go on to basically any major tweet that has a lot of engagement, something posted by say a politician or whatever, uh, and then you click on it, and then you scroll down and look at the comments, the top 10 to 20 comments are all blue checks because those have all been prioritized first. And that's annoying because again, these people are people generally with low follower accounts who don't really know how to use the site, who generally you know don't really know how to post interesting things. They're just kind of like posting like, like, oh yeah, I agree. Or like, oh, like I want to, you know, like do a hate crime. And then like, that's it. Like you have to scroll through like 20 of those to get to the actual replies from actual people who, you know, actually have interesting things or comments to say about this. This makes it very easy to identify these people and they are extremely annoying. 
And so at that point, this becomes not only like, you know, just like, a, you know, a minor annoyance, but it becomes an active detractor to your use of Twitter. It means that if you want to use the platform, you have to actively scroll past a bunch of people with very annoying opinions to get to the things that you actually want and value out of the site, uh, which is probably easily the worst business move I have ever heard of. Just like forcing people, it's like, it's not even like forcing you to look at ads. It's like, you're forcing somebody to look at somebody else's bad opinions. It's like if you like ran a television channel and then instead of running ads in between, you know, like the, the programming, you like forced me to spend like 60 seconds just looking at some random guy saying how much like he wants to kill the Jews or something like that. Like that's that I'm not even kidding. Like that's the kind of stuff that I have to deal with to use the site now is like, I have to like deal with like these terrible opinions from these terrible people. Uh, and, and they all tend to, you know, just be very annoying. Then an even further funnier development is that they started then actually giving blue checks back to people. And, you know, this time it doesn't say like, Hey, this might be a verified account from previously, or it might be a Twitter blue account. It says that it's a Twitter blue account, even if they haven't paid. And so basically what they did is they went in and they forced a bunch of people to get their blue checks back and make it seem as if they are paying, which is false endorsement. Like I'm pretty sure that that's illegal. I don't, I don't know if that's illegal or not, but I feel like we're going to find out in the next month or two. Like it, it seems a bit odd. Uh, so basically they went in and supposedly they basically just gave forcibly blue checks back to everybody who basically had a decent enough following, which was like a million people or more. Uh, and this involved a lot of celebrities who then immediately said, you know, basically, what the fuck? I didn't pay for this and I don't want this. And I'm very upset that you've done this to my account. And then they were trying to do ways to evade it or get around it. Um, this also includes things like celebrities who are dead, like actual dead people's accounts have been given blue checks that say that they paid for Twitter blue. And of course, because those people are dead, they can't object to that and their likeness is being used without their permission, which again, seems very illegal. I don't, again, I'm not a legal expert, but I would love to see what happens in the next few months as a result of this. This also included something where one guy who had a joke username, which was basically like Disney Junior UK, discovered that he had been verified because they mistakenly thought that he was an actual Disney affiliated account. And so they gave him affiliation and then he then immediately was like, well, I guess I might as well have some fun with this. So he immediately tweeted out some stuff. <laughs> um, and Disney is famously litigious. So I'm sure that that's going to go really well for Twitter as well. Yeah, so they've essentially just started speed running their way back to recreating uh, the old model. And uh, they're also essentially speed running their way back to creating the something awful model, which was uh, basically the something awful model was that you paid 20 bucks to open an account. And if you got banned, that was fine. You just had to pay another 20 bucks. Uh, so basically on that site, the whole thing was you control as much as you want, as long as you're willing to spend another 20 bucks each time you got banned. Uh, this is significantly worse. <laughs> you are paying $8 a month, which is $96 a year. And basically it just doesn't give you like, you know, people don't like it. Like people find this to be, it's like a, it's like a mark of shame. It's a badge of dishonor now. And this is why there has started to be this movement that's called block the blue, uh, which is basically just that you use extensions or you do this manually, you just block every blue check that you see because they, they significantly detract from your user experience now. Again, I don't want to have to scroll through 20 of these terrible opinions every time I'm looking at a tweet to see the stuff I actually want to see. If I block a bunch of those people, then I don't have to see them again. <laughs> and I don't have to worry about that the next time I look at a tweet. And it's incredible, like the amount of, the amount of hate speech that is now getting like prioritized, the amount of just garbage, bizarre opinions that are now getting prioritized. It's just, I really did have, like, I honestly expected the website to actually implode and fall apart long before it got to this point. Like this point is getting really grim. Like it's, it's, it's shocking. And it, of course, I'm sure that, you know, the, the entire rollout of Twitter Blue has not been the financial windfall that Elon has, has hoped that it would be. I'm sure that the, you know, company is still hemorrhaging money at an incredible rate. Let's see where it goes, I guess. 
God, it's it's terrible. Again, I, I as I've spoken about in my last video, I, I can't really leave. I have relationships and friendships built up. I have, you know, a significant chunk of my business was built through Twitter and through the interactions that I have there and the people that I've met through there. I can't really leave because a significant chunk of my livelihood just relies on it. Like I could leave, but then I would have to, you know, double down on other platforms. I would have to spend a lot more time, a lot more energy rebuilding, you know, that kind of following. And it's, you know, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a huge, you know, net loss for me. It wouldn't be fun. Ah, incredible. Yeah, just absolutely incredible stuff. Like Elon Musk, business genius. I was trying to be nice to him last time on the last video. Um, I don't have that anymore. I, I've, I've lost it. I've lost any desire to, to, uh, to be nice, I guess. So that is all for this week's video. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know what you should like to see in future videos. I will talk to you all next week. Have a good one.